a fan of softball, then you are going to love the Fast Pitch TV show. We're bringing you more interviews, more videos, and more product reviews than anyone else on the planet. Sit back and get ready. Here's the Fast Pitch TV show. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Fast Pitch TV Show. Now if you found our show on MySpace, Facebook, YouTube, or another video sharing site, please check out our website. I'll tell you every week, check us out. Our website is fastpitch.tv. It's the place to find all of our past episodes and the place to keep up with our future episodes too. I'd also like to thank our sponsor, Softball Junk. Please visit their website at, well of course, it's at softballjunk.com. Now this week... I'm going to bring you part two of Lisa Haber's clinic at SoftballCon. Now, SoftballCon was in Louisville, Kentucky this year. It was a great softball conference. Go to their website, softballcon.net, softballcon.net, to find out more information about the conference and for updates about next year's conference because you may want to go. It was a great conference. Now, if you did not see last week's show or last week's episode, you may want to watch it before you watch this one since it is part of Elisa's clinic, okay? Now, Elisa's clinic was titled, and as I said last week, I love the title of this clinic, How I Learned to Hit 400. What a great clinic, huh? And in this segment of the clinic, this segment is on the stand. So let's go to the interview right after word from our sponsor, or to the show right after word from our sponsor. Do you need a softball bat? Do you want to save $30? SoftballJunk.com is offering an additional $30 discount off the price of all non-sale softball bats on their website. That's right, $30. So the next time you buy a bat, go to SoftballJunk.com and enter the code FPTV30 during checkout. And wham! You just put a cool $30 in your pocket. But now we're actually going to go into the stride, which is the next part. I know I'm breaking this down a lot, but the stride is incredibly important for the swing for a couple of different reasons. The first one is that it's it generates your power mechanism, right? So, as female athletes, where do we get most of our power? Hips. Our hips and legs, exactly. These are the most powerful muscles in the body. These are the ones we need to use. So, if our eyes and hands hit it, hit the ball, our legs won't make it go, right? So we want to make sure that we're maximizing this whole lower leg business going on, but we also want to avoid extremes, okay? So if it's generating our power mechanism, what do we have to do? We have to transfer from 50-50 to start getting that weight back into our back leg and transferring back into, I say on the outline, I say 60-40. I would even say 70-30 is okay. I probably do about 70-30 weight distribution on my back to my front. Does that make sense? And when we do this though, we still want to avoid extremes, right? So remember when I was telling you everything needs to be centered in our body? We need to have that flexion on the inside, balls, on the inside halves of our feet. Same thing on the stride. Okay, even as we load back, if you watch my back knee, if you watch my back knee, this knee is still on the inside of my foot. When I lunge, I don't lunge back like this. Okay? I'm gonna lose power when I do that. It's gonna go out this way instead of going, instead of staying on the center of my body for when I swing. Okay? So we keep the weight on the inner half of the balls of our feet, or on the inner half of both legs. Weight transfer from 50-50 to 60-40. Um, and, we all, and here we want to keep our, our uh, feet and shoulders square with home plate, okay? So remember I was talking about I know people that they have their stance like this. I know a couple people that start with their stance a little closed. If you watch them though, when they all stride, when they start loading onto their back leg, when they start timing, everything comes back to closed. If you have an open stance, closed stance, that's fine. But in the stride, you need to close it back up. Okay, because what we want to do is we want to maximize the amount of plate coverage we can have when we actually begin the swing. So if I have an open stance and I stay open, what pitch, am, what pitch is going to be difficult for me to hit? Outside. Outside, right? Because now I've taken myself this way and now someone throws me an outside pitch, there's no way I'm going to reach that. What about if I step across my body and I don't close up and I'm closed off, what pitch is going to be difficult to hit? Inside. inside. If I run into a hard throwing pitcher that throws inside, Anyone here pitch? So when you see a girl that has her weight across her body like this, you're like, oh, I'm going to jam her. I'm going to get her to hit a weak ground ball in the second baseman, right? Yep. Exactly. You're going to have a hard time hitting the inside pitch. You're going to be late. So we want to make sure that when we do take this step and load up, that we're square. So again, big toe to big toe. If we were to draw a line, it's parallel with the plate. Okay? Avoid extremes. Keep everything in the center of your body. The step itself, 
I'm a proponent of stepping when you hit because for this next part, I'm going to talk about timing mechanism. It helps to keep your swing on time. It helps keep your swing dynamic, okay? If I'm going from a stop position to a run, as opposed to Casey over here is going to start jogging and then run, who's going to go faster? If she's starting as, at a run, right, if she's dynamic going into the movement, she's going to be a lot faster and a lot more powerful than me just standing and then running. So if we're taking the step, we're prepping our body for the explosive movement of hitting, okay? So we take this step, and it's soft, rhythmic, robotic, not robotic, okay? Not stiff and robotic. It's very soft and rhythmic. And again, step on the inner half of your foot, not the outer. Because then what happens is lunging. You guys ever heard of lunging? Maybe you've heard it called something else, but don't lunge forward, right? Always keep everything centered here, soft, rhythmic step. And the other thing that step is going to do for you, and another reason why I'm a proponent of a step, is that this stride is not only a loading mechanism, it's also a timing mechanism. Okay, timing is everything in hitting, period. So all of you guys, I guarantee, if you ever run into problems when you're hitting, I would say seven times out of ten, it probably has to do with the timing. Right? So what you want to do is you want to complete this timing mechanism before or as the pitcher releases the ball. Because if I'm stepping, after the pitcher releases the ball and the ball's already in the air, what has to happen before I can start my swing? The foot has to go down, right? So I have to make sure that this foot is down before I can start my swing. So if it's timing, I want to make sure it happens before. Okay, does that make sense? And all of this stuff that I've been, ha I've been telling you about, loading mechanism, weight on the inner half, squaring up, soft, soft short step to time, that all happens simultaneously. It's one movement. Okay, so I just took one movement in the entire swing and I broke it down into like on my outlines, like 10 different steps. I told you I'm a nerd. I, I like to analyze things, right? So literally, all I've done right now in the first, how long have we been together here? 15, 20 minutes. All I've I haven't talked about the swing yet. I've talked about the stance and I've talked about the stride. Literally, from here to here. Okay? So as you can see, when I did my stride, I had a little bit of movement. I had a little bit, I moved my hands back a little bit, I put my shoulder up, I, had, I did a little bit, it's my own little, I don't know, my own little stamp on it. It's your own personalization, your swing is free to be your own. But as long as all of this stuff that happens, happens before the pitcher releases the ball. All movement needs to stop before the pitcher releases the ball, so you can generate all your energies into actually hitting. Okay? And if you watch video of any great hitter, no matter what they look like when they start, we all end right about here. Everyone. Okay, and if you break down a swing, you'll see it all starts right about here. Does that make sense? I hope you enjoyed today's clinic. Now, each week, I'm going to be showing you more clinics from Lisa's cl uh, Lisa Haber's clinic. So make sure you stop back and check those. Like I said, new clinics are new shows usually come out on Thursdays or Fridays. Now, before we go on, I want to make sure everyone knows we have an app for the iPhone and Android phone. Just go to your phone's app store and search softball and you'll find it. Don't forget to check our website at fastpitch.tv. Become a fan of the show on Facebook at facebook.com slash fastpitch.tv. And you can follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash fastpitch tv of course well that's all for today's show so goodbye and thanks for watching this show is a member of the fast pitch tv network